Hello and welcome to Cracked Open, a podcast guiding you on your journey to becoming a vessel of unconditional love. And this is your host, Beck Mylonis, High Priestess, Channel, and Activator. Join me on this series as I share reflections, insights, and channel transmissions from my journey of walking the initiation path. Each episode is a unique transmission containing supportive frequencies to facilitate the deepest healing, activation, and reconnection with your soul. I invite you to open your mind and set the intention to receive this episode into your heart space. Let's go. Hello and welcome. Guys, I've got to be honest. There is some resistance to coming up and speaking into the topic that I'm going to speak about today. Um, Even though it's an opinion that I've held for quite some time, I have been resistant to speaking about this purely because I do not wish to negate anyone's experience. I do not wish to make anyone feel invalidated. I don't wish to pretend that there aren't people who don't fall into these categories that, um, you know, I don't want to touch the dialogue of gender neutrality and, um, you know, sexual identification and gender identification and all of the things, because it's a very sensitive topic. And because I think as a society, there's a lot of sensitivity around this, and we have to be aware and Um, conscious when we're approaching these topics so as not to make someone feel like shit or cause more uh, mental health issues to people who have already gone through a lot Um, particularly in the you know when I'm talking about gender identity and um, gender neutrality and identifying as whatever it is right it's a really charged topic, right? And I have my own set of beliefs around this. And I would like to enter this episode with compassion and love and acknowledge that the where the framework that I'm sharing this all through is going to be heteronormative, okay? I accept that <laughs> the framework which I'm sharing, um, this perspective is heteronormative. It's going to piss some people off. Um, and I accept that and that's okay. And, you know, if you're angry at me, that's okay. Um, I'm sorry if I trigger you, I'm sorry if my opinion hurts you in some way, I have the perspective of a divine feminine core and a woman, right? So I am a woman with a divine feminine core. My core is feminine and I am mainly a straight woman. I don't, I don't have a hard boundary around that because I have been attracted to women in the past, but most of my experiences have been with men. And that's what I desire to call in because I'm a feminine core. I crave and desire masculine energy and a masculine polarity, right? Not everyone is going to be a feminine core. Um, Not everyone is going to identify as female or male, right? There's a whole gray area of different perspectives, different, um, you know, whatever, situations, configurations, um, identifications, and that is perfect. And obviously, you know, you can have whatever preference you want. You can like women, you can like men, you can like non-gender, you can be attracted to emotions or personality or whatever it is. And that's all perfect and whole and complete. Today, I am really speaking into divine feminine and masculine um, energy. I'm speaking into the energetic core of divine feminine and masculine. And I am speaking in terms of masculine and feminine, um, like heteronormative relationships. That's not to say that some of the stuff that I'm talking about can be applied to same-sex relationships or non-gender specific relationships. Um, When we're talking about energy, everyone has feminine and masculine energy. So feminine energy is not necessarily um, unique to just females and it's not new masculine energy is not necessarily unique to males and there's a spectrum, right? So you can be a feminine or a female with lots of masculine energy, which I was in the past, right? Or you can be a male with lots of feminine energy. And perhaps you're a female who has lots of masculine energy. So what you're trying to call in is the opposite polarity, which is a male or a female with lots of feminine energy, right? So like look beyond the 
the identifications that I'm, I'm, I'm sharing all of this through one lens. The invitation is to look beyond that and see how it might apply to different configurations. But what I'm talking about specifically today, one of the topics that I will go into is the attack on the family model, the attack on feminine and masculine energy, the attack on gender, um, the attack on like the feminine core and the masculine core and how our paradigm and our society is actually taking us away from the pure essence of divine feminine or masculine energy and pitting men and women against each other, right? That's what I want to speak into today. So please know all of my um, sharing today is going to be based around and from the framework of a feminine um, core being, like that's my polarity. I'm a feminine core who is attracting a masculine man, right? That is how I'm sharing. Instead of like trying to cover this from all different angles, um, I'm not going to do that because I don't have an understanding of what it's like to be a gay woman who has who identifies as um, more of a masculine energy or a homosexual man who is attracted to feminine men or whatever it is. Like I don't have any understanding of being any of those things, right? So I'm not going to try and explore this <laughs> topic from those angles. What I'm going to do is explore from my framework of understanding. So now that that's out of the way, I had to say that because I was like, it's gonna, you know, this is a very polarizing opinion that I am offering. Um, but I am looking at the nuclear family. I'm looking at um, masculine, feminine relationship dynamics. And again, please know, like, just because I'm a feminine core as a woman doesn't mean that you are. You could be a feminine, uh, a woman, um, identify as a woman and be seeking a feminine core man, because that's what you, you know, that's what your core polarity is. So when I speak about divine feminine and divine masculine, identify within yourself as I'm speaking, what feels true for you and leave anything that doesn't feel true for you in this episode. Like truly, this is my opinion. <laughs> this is what I see and believe, and it could change. And I invite you to let go of anything that doesn't serve you. Do not take it on as truth if you don't agree with it. And look within yourself as to, okay, when she's speaking about divine feminine qualities, that feels good for me. That's how I identify. Or maybe she's speaking about divine masculine energy and that's what I'm attracted to. Or, you know, that's what I, I seek to call in. Or maybe she's speaking about divine masculine and I identify as more than that, as more, I identify more with those qualities, right? So it's an invitation to like look within and see, okay, where am I, where is my energy what am I leaning more towards? What is my core? And again, just because you have a feminine core or a masculine core doesn't mean that you don't have feminine or masculine energy, the opposite energy, right? We all have all of it, okay? So now that that's all out of the way, what I choose to speak into today is what the energy represents in the divine feminine and divine masculine and how our current paradigm is essentially it's creating um, conflict and it's taking us away from our pure essence, identifying with the true feminine or the true masculine or the divine feminine or the divine masculine, right? So to me, divine feminine at its core, the qualities of the divine feminine are creativity. Um, it's cyclical in nature. The, the elements of the divine feminine are water and earth. So nurturing, um, free flowing, can be chaotic, um, intuitive, deep, uh, mystical processes through sensation and experience and emotion, right? So the feminine heals through experiencing, through moving through life, through expressing the emotions, through releasing the emotions, through following the, the, the feminine energy, which is the life force that wishes to move through us and move us, right? Compassion, nurturing, um, softness, vulnerability, openness, um, I think I said nurturing intuition. The feminine is the visionary. She has the creative spark of the idea, the vision, the um, connection to God, right? The connection. So the fem feminine energy moves upwards. Feminine energy is represented by Kundalini, Shakti, um, which is coiled in, in the traditions that it comes from. It's coiled like a snake at the base of our spine and it wants to move upwards to the crown. The feminine is Shakti. The masculine is Shiva. When Shakti meets Shiva, so the feminine energy held in our 
um, in our sacral, in our womb, in our or energetic womb, for those who don't have a womb, in our root chakra, is able to move through the chakras to meet Shiva, which is consciousness, which is the masculine, the divine masculine. That is when divine union um, occurs, right? So the masculine on the opposite side is the container. It is the witnessing consciousness. It is consciousness itself. It is all, it is the, sorry, the nothing, the non-judgment, the neutral, the um, detachment, the logical, the um, the driving force to get the things done. Like, so the container for the feminine to flow in. It is the presence, the witnessing. I think I said witnessing already. It is logic. It is um, structured, right? So in order for all of this feminine creativity and chaos and wisdom, like um, not wisdom, it's sensation and emotion and intuition and creativity to be channeled into something productive, we need to have that masculine container for that energy to be received, right? We need to have the masculine structure. We need to have the non-judgmental presence of the masculine to see. So the masculine is also the thought, right? The thought, the I am presence, the I am, um, the thought, that, that had everything exist. So it's God, right? God consciousness um, or Christ consciousness, right? And then the feminine is the universe, the mother earth, the Kundalini, the life force that brings that thought into reality. So they are the core. That is the core. Feel into the energetics of those. When I speak about the feminine, I want to move kind of like you might see divine feminine practitioners moving like this. And they're like, oh, and if you're listening to this, you won't hear what um, you won't see how I'm moving, but I'm moving like a snake, right? Like I'm flowing, I'm sensual, I'm soft, I'm curious, I'm playful, I'm open, I'm going where the flow takes me, where, oh, well, that's interesting. I'm going to go over there. Oh, I'm going over there and I've changed my mind and now I'm over here and I don't fucking know what I want to eat for breakfast. And <laughs> right, like, so that's the feminine. Whereas the masculine is direct, it is penetrating. It is like, this is where we're going. This is how we're doing it. Let's take the fucking action. Let's go. And we've been really lacking in that. So we've been going through this um, awakening period where all these ideas of the feminine are coming through these visions, these um, visions of the new earth and what we, we desire to create and the emotions of it and feeling what that would feel like and all of this stuff, the healing that's taking place, the processing that we haven't had that direction that structure, that container, that masculine presence saying, let's get the fucking shit done. All right, let's go. You have this idea. You brought this vision. Let's go. Let's do the thing. Right. So that's the, in my mind, that's how I perceive the masculine. They're like, I'm going to take care of shit. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out and, and, you know, in our, in our evolution, if you think about the caveman, like I'm going to go club the animal and bring the food home for you while you take care of the children and nurture and um, you nurture me. Right. So the divine feminine is here to nurture the masculine into um, maturity, into evolution, into spiritual depth, um, into their highest kind of calling and configuration. And again, I don't want to shit on men when I say this, but any truly divine masculine being knows at his core that he needs a strong woman or man or whatever divine feminine being behind him, supporting him um, and holding him up. And he knows that the power of the feminine, the wisdom of the feminine, the enlightened qualities or the creativity of the feminine is literally the gateway to the universe. And so they're not afraid of that feminine power. They're not seeking to control it or confine it or tell it it's too much because they know the pussy is the portal, right? <laughs> like that feminine being can take you to places beyond what you're capable of because you have this framework of knowledge and wisdom in which you perceive the world, right? Whereas the feminine experiences life. She experiences the realm. She experiences love. She is pure love. If you look at the mother archetype, all of us have a mother, right? That mother birthed you into the world. She is the point of creation. So any man who has done the work understands the magic of the feminine. And he knows that he is here to protect provide for and support that woman for all that fam feminine being the being that creative force. And he understands his place or his role. Right. And the woman knows, or the feminine knows that without that masculine container, without that security, that support, that um, 
that holding, that witnessing, she wouldn't exist. <laughs> Without the masculine thought or the consciousness witnessing Shakti, she wouldn't exist because there'd be no one to, ex to observe her, right? So she wouldn't exist. She'd be there, but she wouldn't exist really because if a tree falls down in a forest um, and no one sees it, did it really happen, right? It's that old age old kind of saying of like, unless it's witnessed and seen, does it really exist, right? So God consciousness is the masculine and it's witnessing us having our experience of the feminine experiential nature of creation. Um, and it's witnessing us and that's how it's experiencing through us. Yeah, capiche, we got that, right? And so what's happened, unfortunately, in our paradigm has been an attack on um, the feminine, has been an attack on the masculine, and has brought us into this neutral, um, non-polarized, and not in a good way, um, mucky, kind of like confusing state of being where we all think that we can be everything and we are taken away from our core essence of who we're truly here to express as, right? Again, this might piss some people off. <laughs> um, this began and has been happening for the past kind of 100 years or so. Um, no, I want to take it actually right back to revering the goddess, right? Way back before Christianity and organized religion um, in pagan cultures, in indigenous cultures, the feminine was revered right? There were goddesses. We prayed to the earth. We respected the earth. We took care of her. We loved her. We nourished her. We understood the importance of creation, the importance of the feminine. The feminine was seen as the visionary quality. It was revered. It was respected. The feminine was seen in her power. And actually we worship feminine deities more than we did masculine deities. Of course, men didn't like this <laughs> in our patriarchy. Men did not like the women having the power. And so we shifted into this masculine paradigm, which is what we've been in for the past while, right? And through that came Christianity, came religion, came um, the matrix, came the structures of society, which then negated women to second-class citizens, which you know, tried to tell us we were sinful, burnt witches, um, said that the man is, you know, there's only one God and it's a male God and he had a son and that son is the only way, or, you know, in other cultures, it's, it's the men who are the priests and, you know, I'm talking about Western cultures, mostly Eastern cultures have this shit figured out. Can I just say, um, but you know, it, it was the masculine that was this creator, this God. And that God was a, sp a spiteful, revengeful, vengeful, um, judgmental God who instilled fear in our hearts, right? Fear and control. So most of this framework and this paradigm is based on fear and control of um, diminishing the feminine because it threatened the paradigm of, um, of fear <laughs> and control that was wanting to happen, to control humans, right? To enslave us. And the feminine intuition, the feminine creativity, the feminine visionary qualities connected to the universe, all of that, the, the fact that we create our own reality, all of this wisdom and this stuff that was seeded here by other races when we came here, that was a big no-no <laughs> in, the, in the status quo and what they wanted us to believe um, to remove us from our source, right? And so there was this long process of unfolding that occurred and through um time essentially what we've come to is this wave, wave of feminism which is telling us that fem females can be in the workforce and work long hours and you can be a ceo too and you don't have to stay at home with the kids and you can go on birth control and let go of your natural cycle and control your body and you know, females can work eight hour days and then come home and, and take care of their kids. And men, um, you know, no longer have to be in the core supporter role. Like men don't have to do the heavy lifting anymore. Men don't have to provide and um, show up in that way, provide the direction, provide the action, right? And what's happened is we've been removed from our core essence as a result, right? I would not consider myself a feminist. I don't consider myself a feminist because so much of feminism is actually pitted against us or them what it's doing is creating a barrier and a war between men and women right if you speak to most feminists hate fucking men 
<laughs> they're like, what they're doing to men is essentially doing to men what men did to women. They're saying, no, you, you don't get to tell me how to be. You don't get to do this. You don't get to do that. Um, all men hate women. Like, I want to be equal. I want to be this. I want to be that. I get to do all the things. And it's like, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. You're allowed to do that. We're all equal, but at the same time, we are all different, right? So the, the current feminism dialogue is trying to tell us that women can do everything that men can do. And I'm sorry, but we fucking can't. We are literally not designed to do the things that men do. Super polarizing opinion. And you're going to be like, Beck hates women. She's not a feminist. I'm not a fucking feminist. I'm a humanist. Not even a humanist. I'm a beingness-nist, <laughs> right? Like, I think we're all equal. Like, just because we're different doesn't make men or women more important. But I think having this argument of, I'm going to get angry at men now, and I'm going to attack men, and I'm going to call men out and treat men like this and treat men like that. And how dare you, right? That's actually pitting us against each other more. It's creating more anger towards the masculine. We already have enough anger towards the masculine based on kind of what happened in the past, right? We all carry a lot of anger. And I talk about this in a previous episode. So check out the feminine vulnerability episode if you desire to feel more into that. We're carrying enough trauma and anger at the masculine. We don't need to be pitted against each other, right? We don't need to be acting in the same ways that we're calling out. So much of feminism is calling out the masculine and making them pay for, you know, it's based on anger and fear. And it's like, can we, instead of being feminist or having to have a man who's a feminist and you have to be a feminist or you're a shitty person, can we see that we are all equal and valid and worthy? And we are all equal, equal and valid and worthy in our strengths and in our differences. We are meant to be different. There's a divine fucking purpose for that. The reason why there's yin and there's yang, there's night and there's day, there's darkness and there's light is because together it makes the whole, right? So you can't say, which is what a lot of women do, I don't need the men. Men are fucking useless. Women can do everything now. I don't need a man. I'm strong. I'm independent. Um, I can do all the things that men can do. And so therefore men are useless and we should just throw them away and forget about them, right? We can't do that because we do. We need the masculine to help us build the new earth. Who's going to be lifting the bricks, guys? Do you want to lift the bricks? I don't want to fucking lift the bricks. It's a stupid example, but like who is going to provide that direction? Who is going to get the shit done when you're in your process um, downloading all the things? Who is going to go out and get the dinner, <laughs> kill the animal, whatever it is, and bring it home when you're taking care of the children, right? That's a really basic example. But what I'm saying is maybe we didn't have it so wrong when we had these family structures of, and I can feel like people are going to get pissed at me saying this, but like, maybe it's not so wrong that a woman is the care, um, the core, sorry, um, nurturer, the core um, loving presence. Like, and again, like men can also be loving and nurturing to their children. And you can embody those aspects of the divine mother as a masculine or a divine father. Right. But the woman was the one who birthed you. Like you have a different relationship to the feminine than to the masculine and the feminine is soft and nurturing. Like perhaps our children are turning out the way that they are because we are not giving them that nurturing quality and attention and devotion and um, compassion of the feminine because we're too busy working because we're too busy trying to do all the fucking things that we are forgetting what our core essence is which is to be that nurturer, that supporter, that um, presence. Again, it might not be for you to have a family. It might not be for you to be a, a feminine being. And if you're a masculine core as a woman, cool, honor that. Call in a man who's fully in his feminine, who has those elements that um, you know create that connection with you, that bring you into that union together. But you can't have two hyper-masculine people in a relationship because then it's missing the feminine qualities. You can't have two hyper-feminine people in a relationship because then nothing gets done, right? And I wanna speak particularly into, and I know that there'll be feminists everywhere being like, we fought for this, right? <laughs> Rolling around in their graves, women entering the workforce and women going on the birth control pill, sorry, birth control pill and women 
being forced to let go of their natural cycle, right? Women are cyclical. At their core, women are cyclical. We go through winter, spring, um, summer, autumn in the cycles of our body. We are not designed to be fully output 100% of the time the way that men are. We're not. Literally our hormones, our wiring, our chemistry is just not designed for us to be always on the go, to be always achieving, doing, striving, performing, right? Um, we are not meant to not have a period and be go, 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 31 days a month, 30 days a month, whatever it is, right? And when we remove ourselves from that essence, that cyclical nature, we're removing ourselves from the core of what the feminine is, right? And it's actually, and I know this because I was operating in a super masculine energy. I was on the pill. I was on birth control. I was trying to do all the things and be this hyper successful CEO. And again, I'm not saying women can't be successful. That's not what I'm saying. But I did all of those things and I realized I was burnt out. I was tired. I was fucking exhausted all the time. I was repressing a lot of stuff. I was not creative. I didn't feel connected to myself. I didn't feel connected to my body. Um, I struggled to get shit done. I was not productive, right? The way that I work the best is when I'm ovulating, <laughs> when I'm, I have that creative impulse, getting the shit done then, like work really hard in that five, eight day window, whatever it is. And then I rest. I don't work out when I have my period. I don't force myself to go to the gym in certain cycles of my, um, certain stages of my cycle, right? And since I started doing that, my life has transformed. My business becomes more easeful and graceful. I'm happier. Um, I'm able to just be in however I'm feeling and not judge myself, right? So that's how it's really affected the feminine. Like this stuff has affected how we are able to embody divine feminine energy. And it's affected the masculine too. And many people think that on this healing journey, that men need to be more like women. And that's not fucking true, right? I was talking to a, a, a male friend of mine about how he holds men's circles. And I was curious, like the difference. And I expected, and I was like, why don't you talk about your emotions or do this or do that? And it's like, men are not meant to fucking do that. They're not meant to sit in their emotions for days and talk about their emotions. Like, yes, have an open heart, be emotionally aware and feel your emotions, right? Because there's also, it's damaging to tell men to toughen up and be strong and just be a fucking man, right? It's not what I'm suggesting. I'm not suggesting that we tell men to not be emotional and cut off from their emotions and um, not be sensitive and don't cry and all of that stuff. That's, that's harmful and damaging, but we can swing too far the other way, which is what's happening in the spiritual world. And this is what I found in Bali. I couldn't actually find a, tr a true masculine man because all the men that made me, you know, were on the path with me or were meeting me were hyper feminine. So what they did in their healing process is they became too feminine, too flowy, too open, too intuitive, too emotional. And they let go of all of their masculinity, all of their qualities. So yeah, I felt safe around them because they were hyper feminine, but they couldn't actually fully hold me and support me in the ways that I needed to, to get shit done, to, um, snap myself out of my cycle to whatever it was, right? When I was in a spiral of emotion. And we put this pressure on men um, to be more like women when really it's not going to look like that. <laughs> a, a divine masculine being is not going to be hyper emotional. They're not, they're logical. <laughs> they, they think and process things differently. So in this men's circle, what they do is they call each other or they say their goals and their desires and then they express what's been going on for them and they fucking call each other out in a playful and helpful way and supportive, but they don't sit there and hold space and cry together and, you know, express all their emotions together. No, they talk, they process it out. They call each other out. They hold each other accountable. What action are you going to take? What are you going to do? And then they go throw axes or beat each other up or whatever that is. And they need that. <laughs> It's their core to express that warrior in a healthy way, to express that raw, masculine, dark, masculine energy, which is the raping and the pillaging. And yes, that's horrible, right? It's horrible that she even said that, raping and pillaging. But there is this dark masculine, which if we don't allow it to express in a healthy way, then it's expressed through over porn use, through, um, you know, violating people's boundaries, through guilt and shame. And unless we express that in a healthy way, it's just going to create more damage. And that's why we have porn. That's why we have um, drug addiction. That's why we have 
all this stuff in our society, which is removing us from connection because this dark masculine and dark feminine is not being allowed to be expressed in a, a safe way, in a happy way. So yeah, like wrestling with the men, that's something that they have to do. They have to beat their chests and get really primal and, you know, want to ravish, ravage, ravage their woman. Um, and that's the dark masculine. And it's healthy to express that in a healthy, productive way, just like it's healthy to express the dark feminine, which is the rage, which is the sacred, you know, the sacred rage and anger and the emotional storm and all of that quality, the seductress, like all of these things can be used harmfully, or they can be used wholly, I want to say, or they can be used productively in a way that doesn't cause more damage. And because we've been suppressing all of this with guilt and shame and fear of I'm going to go to hell if I express my sexuality or if I desire to ravage a woman or, um, you know, dom being dominated by a man, a lot of core women, core feminine polarity women actually have a desire to be completely ravaged and um, penetrated and um, dominated by a man. Like the reason why we have this desire is because we want to be claimed. We want to be ravished. We want to be, um, yeah, like received in that way. Right. And the problem when we're in too much of a masculine energy is that we don't allow ourselves to be, we don't want to release control. We don't feel safe to surrender. We don't feel like we can be soft. And what happens is as we try to do all the things and, you know, be equal, we are becoming hard. We're becoming shut off from our essence and we're pushing away the opposite end of the spectrum. We're pushing away the masculine instead of coming into unity, coming close. And so femininity, sorry, not femininity, uh, feminism and all of these gender wars that are going on and gender neutrality and all of the things that are happening in this current paradigm, teaching or telling men that they need to be more emotional and soft and this, that, and whatever fucking confusing us all is actually creating more separation because it's creating more people that are not truly authentically being who they are, who are pitting each other against each other, um, creating a, a war of divide between the feminine and the masculine and um, I should be allowed to do this and I'm going to call you out in anger, right? It's, it's perpetuating cycles of anger. And all of this at its core is being guided and dictated and created for us with the purpose of keeping us away from sacred union, divine union, coming into unity, right? It's creating us pissed at each other, <laughs> separate, um, you know, confused about where we stand, how we relate to others. Um, it's creating relationships that don't have passion or chemistry or spark um, because that person is not capable of giving you what you need at your core. It's creating marriages which break down and break up. It's creating um, people who like really just want to rebel against the system and, and not even be part of it because they haven't liked how it's been, right? It's creating women who think that they can do all the things that men can and then becoming burnt out and depressed in the process. It's creating men who feel not fucking worthy, not useful because women don't need them anymore. It's like, do you understand? Like there's just so many things happening in the background because of this breakdown um, that is taking us away from the feminine and the masculine coming in and merging and sacred union is the recognizing and the witnessing that we need to come together. And that happens by us coming into inner union first. So harmonizing our own feminine and masculine energy first and identifying, okay, am I a feminine core? Am I a masculine core? What energy needs to be healed and brought into union? Like, where do I need to heal my divine mother, my divine father, my inner child, whatever that is, um, before then creating that healing in container of relationship or intimacy. And that's not necessarily like marriage and children. That could be in a, a modern, more open kind of configuration of open relating or whatever the fuck else, right? Whatever configuration that is. But until we get this and realize that we need each other and that we need to honor what we truly are at our core, we're going to be in this loop of pushing each other away and 
you know, dishonoring ourselves and watching all of our relationships break down and watching society get so fucking confusing that it's like, I don't even know what to believe anymore. <laughs> right. I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know what family values are. I don't know what, um, you know, what is true, what is real. So that is kind of what I wanted to speak into today. Um, my invitation for you is to do that work at looking at what is my core? Um, what, are, what do I need? Like what not need? Because we have everything we need within us, but like what would support me, right? So would it support me to be with a more masculine being? Would it support me to be with a more feminine being? Am I pretty kind of neutral? And therefore I need someone who's also kind of neutral. And to be honest with you, like the reason why there isn't chemistry is because there's not that polarity, right? So if you really love the person that you're with, but you're both of the same polarity, there isn't that chemistry because there isn't the difference, right? The attraction, the chemistry comes from the difference, from the contrast. And you need that contrast to have the chemistry. So if you're in a relationship or in a connection with someone where you don't feel that chemistry, it's like, look at, okay, cool. Is my partner more this or more that? And where am I in this? And what is more truthful for me? And do I need to let this person go because they don't have the core essence that would create that growth or that um, contrast or that difference in my life? It's good for us to be different, right? We don't need to be the same. We don't need to have all the same traits and qualities, right? And in allowing yourself to express those qualities which are true to you, which are divine, you allow space for the opposite polarity to express in their fullness, in their expression of what those qualities are, right? So in being fully surrendered as a feminine core being, you allow the masculine to support you. And they want to do that <laughs> at their core. They desire to do that. That's what they want. If, if you are hyper independent, which I spoke about again in this previous episode of vulnerability, then that creates no space for the masculine to support you, to provide, to take the action, right? Um, so that's what I wanted to say today. Thank you for listening to another episode of Cracked Open. Don't forget to hit subscribe and share with a friend if this episode has served you in any way. For more information about the work that I do or to get in touch with me, read the show notes or head to beckmylonis.com. Until next time, beautiful soul. <laughs>